What's up everybody, this is Derek Gott from Gott Tech Reviews here with a review of the 8GB XFX RX 480 graphics card. The RX 480 is the newest GPU offered by AMD's Radeon graphics division utilizing the new FinFET 14 nanometer processor technology. Along with the shrink and die size come some other improvements to AMD's GPU line, such as asynchronous shaders, support for DX12, FreeSync, and Vulkan. The RX 480 is AMD's VR entry point for the masses, offering a premium VR experience for the low entry price of $199 for the 4GB RX 480 and $229 for the 8GB RX 480. At these low prices, don't expect this to be a bare bones card because you get also HDR support for sharp, colorful, and vivid HDR ready games and movies thanks to a brand new display engine and HDR ready capabilities. What keeps all this graphical magic from disappearing into the clouds? That would be Wattman, formerly known as AMD Overdrive. Wattman is an interface allowing you to see in real time the performance of your RX 480 and make adjustments on the fly to both overclock and undervolt your GPU. You can change fan speeds, monitor your core temperature, adjust memory clocks, and see in real time the results on a continuous graph. Okay, now that you've learned about what the RX 480 is, let's get into a little about what it can do and go over some benchmarks. First off, let's start with everyone's favorite benchmark, Fire Strike. All benchmarks were ran on an average computer with an FX 8350 on a Gigabyte GA 78 LMT USB 3 motherboard with 16 gigabytes of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM, much like a computer that we found in the home of the demographic AMD is targeting with the RX 480. Here you see that the RX 480, while paired with an FX 8350 that's not overclocked, scores an 8483 combined score. This shows it coming in below a minimum spec gaming PC set up for Oculus or HTC Vive. Now keep in mind that this was before the 16.7.2 driver update, so I went back after the update and re-ran Fire Strike for a score of 8651. Much closer to the VR gaming PC specs, bringing the RX 480 up from 55% greater than all results on Fire Strike to 63% greater, an increase of 8% which, for the first of many probable driver updates in the RX 480's life cycle, I'd say that's a win. Now using plain old 3D Mark 11 Performance 1.0 benchmarks, you can see the RX 480 scores a 12,110, putting it better than 79% of all results. I also went back after the 16.7.2 driver update and re-ran 3D Mark 11, and the RX 480 got 12,591 and 83% better than all results, for a gain of 4%, putting it beyond the specs of a VR gaming PC, which scored a 12,034. Let's dig into the gaming side and see what this card could do in real-life gaming situations. All the following real-world gaming tests were run on the XFX 8GB RX 480 that is factory overclocked to 1288 MHz and the highest possible graphics settings on a 1920x1080 FreeSync monitor, so his V-Sync was turned off. The first game is everyone's favorite, Team Fortress 2. At max settings with 16 times anastropic filtering, I got a steady 65 frames per second. Lowering the anastropic filtering to 8 times raises the frames per second to a steady 110. Next, let's move on to Battlefield 4 using Mantle instead of DirectX 11. With ultra settings, I saw a steady 65 frames per second with no drops at all. Up next is iRacing. Running iRacing at max detail will get you a high of 106 frames per second with dips to 70s occasionally. If you lower the side mirror detail, you can maintain a steady 100 frames per second. Evolve just went free to play, so we threw that into our testing as well and was surprised to see that the RX 480, with all settings set to very high, maintained an average of 68 to 75 frames per second. Mafia 2, one of my all-time favorite games, at max settings, maintains a rock-solid 75 frames per second and still holds up to many titles today in the graphical department. Next on, we're going to move to War Thunder. Set to high because movie mode is not recommended for gaming. This achieves a 98 frames per second rate with a few dips to 72 when the action is at its most intense. Last but not least, we move on to Doom. This is where the RX 480 really impressed us, with 105 frames per second and very, very few drops to 90 frames per second when the action was intense. Keep in mind that this was before the new Vulcan patch for Doom, so you can bet those frames per seconds have increased. That's it for our benchmarks, but as you can see, the RX 480 is a massive powerhouse performer in its price range. Now, for a 1080p to 1440p card, this is a no-brainer, must-buy card. It will handle 4K, albeit at a lot slower frame rate, but if you want to watch 4K programming or video, this card will churn it out no problem. But just a quick side note about the benchmarks you've just seen. 
All the gameplay benchmarks were taken before the 16.62 driver, which saw the GPU clock speed bouncing all over the place when under load. After the 16.7.2 driver update, we noticed that the GPU core clock was steady at 1288 MHz while under load, so you can bet that the benchmarks, if run again now, would be more steady and with higher frame rates. In closing, I have to say this card is well worth the money. It is AMD's hear me roar moment which echoes loudly across the GPU planes and the hype train did not derail. So if you're looking for a great affordable yet very powerful GPU, look no farther than the XFX 8GB RX480. I'm Derek Gott for Got Tech Reviews, thanks for watching and like we say, Got Tech? Let's talk about it! <laughs>